Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be creating an iridescent effect material in Unreal 4 where iridescence, if you're not aware, is this sort of um, appearance here where a surface seems to reflect like a sort of rainbow-like spectrum of colours that will kind of change and shimmer depending on how you're looking at the surface. So in Unreal 4, let me just show you what we're doing first. I've got a couple of material spheres set up here with different versions of the effect on. These three over here, they're highly metallic and they're just using the cobblestone normal map because one of the things we need to be able to do is take the surface normal map into account. Reason is, um, the iridescent effect depends on the angle you're looking at a surface from, and since the um, the normal map changes essentially the angle of the surface, if that makes sense, well, we need to take that into account. So here you can see there's a slight iridescence to this. You can see the rainbow effect in these cobblestones. If I move over to here, here's another one, again, using the cobblestone texture from the starter content pack, but with a slightly stronger effect going on. I think the underlying colour map is something like marble, and then the normal map is the cobblestones one. Then looking at this one here, it's even stronger still. So you can really see here how the iridescent effect is following the normal map, as well as changing as I move the camera around the surface. See, so you can see those colours sort of shift a bit just as I pan the camera across. Now these things over the other side, they are using a much smoother normal map. I think it's the normal map just, just doing these tiles. The underlying colour map, um, I'm not sure, it might be sandstone or something like that. But this gives you more of an idea how iridescence changes as I move the camera. In fact, it's more obvious on these than it was on the um, more metallic things over there. That's the other thing. These spheres over this side aren't metallic. They're just um, metallic zero smoothness, uh, probably turned off a bit. Again, in the middle one, the effect is a little bit stronger. And then the one over the far end, the effect is turned all the way up. So you can really see how that changes as I move the camera around. Then one final thing before we get started. You could use a modified version of the same technique to get this kind of soap bubble effect, where we've got something that's um, transparent through the dead centre, more opaque towards the edges, and then using the same iridescence effect. Okay, so let's get started. Right, so to start with, there are two textures that we need to bring into Unreal, which I've created already, and they'll be linked in the description. All they are, if you want to create them yourselves, are just two really simple like uh, rainbow spectrums, one horizontal, one vertical. Let me just show you those. So this is it in um, GIMP, you know, the free Photoshop thing. And here we have the uh, the vertical spectrum texture. Sorry, I think this is just two by, is it two pixels by 256? And then we've got the same thing here, but horizontally. And we can use these two textures to, um, you know, alter the color of our surface to get this iridescent effect. So to start with, let's just get both of those, drag them into our content browser. And we're ready to go. And like I said, these are both these will both be linked in the description for this video. Now we create a new material. This will be like the master iridescent material that we will um, create material instances of to do specific things. So I'm just going to call this M um, irid. And then what we want in here is uh, first of all, there's two texture samples for those two for these two textures. You know the um, spectrums that we just brought in. So if I zoom out a bit, we'll start by going. T click to get a texture sample, T click again to get another texture sample. Then for this one, we will add the horizontal spectrum. And for this one, we will add the vertical spectrum. There may be a, do a way of doing these combined into the one image. Um, but I haven't tried, I've just done it this way. Okay, now really, all our iridescent effect is when you get right down to it is distorting these two depending on the camera angle and the normal map, and then blending that over the color map. It is really all it is. So we will need uh, the next two things. Then we need a normal app, so T, click again. And just for testing this out, I'm going to use the cobblestone normal map that's part of the start content. You know, the stuff that comes with Unreal. So cobblestone, blah, 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 underscore N. That's that one. It's a nice, strong normal map, so we can get a good effect out of it. And we need the direction the camera is looking at the surface from. So that's right click camera vector. There we go. Right then, so the idea here is we will use the information from the red channel of the normal map to mess with the horizontal uh, spectrum and the green channel to mess with the uh, vertical spectrum and we'll blend them both into the camera vector. Now the camera vector it has three components, X, Y and Z, and we need this to end up as two components. So what I'm going to do is put a component mask first of all and we'll have just the red and green channels here then what we'll say is add to that whatever's in the red channel of the normal map and then run that into the um, horizontal spectrum's UVs and wait for that to update 
see. So now we've got that. And then similar idea down here, we'll get a copy of all these, well, a copy of these two nodes. I'm going to change the mask to be just the blue and green channels. Um, the reason is, I'll, I'll show you later in the video what happens if you um, keep that the same or, or use just a single, like say, just R here and just G here. You get like a weird stripey effect, which we don't want. Uh, anyway, so we'll set that to GB. We'll run the camera vector into that. This time we'll add the green channel from the normal map to that and run that into UVs. See, so now we've got that distortion with the horizontal, uh, the vertical spectrum. Now it's just time to start blending all this into our main material, really. So we want to get another texture sampler to act as the color map. Um, by default, we'll go for something like a marble, just because. Yeah, there you go. It's something else that's in the starter pack, and it's just a nice, simple, quite light material. And nice, really, just blending all this together. So we want to, first of all, linear interpolate or lerp these two together. Then the result of that lerp will be lerped with this, and then that will get wired straight into a base color. So F hold L for linear interpolate, click. L for linear interpolate again, and click here. Then what we're going to do is put this into A, this into B, and if you're not familiar, what Linear Interpolate does is takes two inputs, A and B, and outputs some combination of them, depending on this alpha value. The alpha value will start off on 0.5, and what 0.5 will do is blend inputs A and B equally and spit out that result of the blend. So that's fine. That's what we want. For this Linear Interpolate, we want the um, color map texture up here as A, our blend of the two uh, modified spectrum as B, and then the thing here is the alpha value will allow us to control the strength of the effect. So let me show you. If we wire that into base color, and when this update, see, so we've got this now. The alpha value here, if we make a constant for that, constant, the way alphas work, again, if you're not familiar with that, an alpha of zero will send out entirely input A. So here you can see just input A is going through with none of our, what we've got wired into input B. And then a value of 1 would be the other way around. So 1 would be entirely this rainbow effect that we've got going on down here and none of the color map being sent through. So we have that. And then, like I said, 0.5 is an equal blend of them. So really, we can change this into a material parameter called something like strength, and we can use it to control the strength of the iridescent effect. So let's do that now. So right-click on that, convert to parameter, and give that a name like strength. Uh, other things we, we may want to be able to change in material instances, so we need them as parameters, are what normal map are we using and what color map are we using. So right click on our normal map, convert to parameter, and we may as well just call that normal map. And our color map, right click, convert to parameter, color map. And then before I forget, we should wire the normal map actually into the normal channel like you normally would do like you usually would do so that it um it, it does actually kind of you know give that 3d effect on the surface and then really the last few things i want here are some more parameters for metallic specular and roughness so let's get three more constants so hold one and click three times and we'll wire one of these things into metallic and we'll set metallic to one for now We'll wire something into specular, leave that as zero, and this other one into roughness, leave that as zero, then turn all three of them into material parameters. So right click on this, convert to parameter, metallic, then this one we can right click, convert to parameter, and which one's that specular? And then finally roughness, so right click, convert to parameter, roughness. And then what that means is just based on this one material, we can get lots of different effects. So you can already see here, the thing that's in the little preview up at the top left, that's like the effect I showed you first on the material spheres. Okay, uh, great then, that's all we need to do in here. Let's hit apply. And what have we left? We've left strength on one, haven't we? In fact, I'm gonna change the default value of strength to 0.5 and then hit apply. Right, let's test it then. So back in the map, um, if I go into content, starter content, props, we'll drag in that material preview mesh. I 
we go there. And we will put, if I can remember where I put our material, first person, um, hold on a sec. There we are. If we just drag and drop that iridescent material on there, that's what we get. Okay, so it's not too bad an effect really. And then to make other variations of it, like I said, just use material instances. So let's put another one of, let's copy this material sphere by dragging it while holding Alt. Then for this one, we will right click on our iridescent material, say create material instance, and we'll call this, um, I don't know what a good name for this would be, M irid 2 Then we can double click that. And then here, just change whichever parameters we want. So if all we're interested in is changing the strength, we can just tick this strength box and drop that to maybe 0.2. See, so now it's nowhere near a strong an effect, or we can dial that all the way up to 1, in, case, in which case it will be a very strong effect like that. Uh, we'll leave it as 1, hit save, and put that there. See, so now we've got like a much stronger iridescent effect on this one. So then the effect I was showing you with the tiles before, let's just create that one. Hold Alt and click and drag this again to copy it. Uh, right click on our iridescent material, create material instance again. And then in this one, we will change the color map to be the sandstone. I'm not sure what how much of a difference that actually makes. We'll change the normal map to be those tiles. So it's tiles, the one that ends underscore N. And there you go, already that looks, actually leaving it metallic maybe not be Maybe not so bad. I'll take it to quite different. I'll change the metallic down a little bit though. So put metallic on maybe 0.6. Um, roughness can go up to 1. Mm, not sure I like that really. Okay, roughness 0.2. Specular maybe 1. Specular doesn't have too much of an effect. And we'll turn the iridescent effect maybe down to 0.1. So you've got like a slight rainbow effect going on there, but it's not overpowering. Save that. And drop that there. See, so we've got a very subtle iridescence on this now. It is there, but it's not overpowering. Certainly quite a nice effect. I mean, compared to that, that one's maybe a bit over the top. And this one, to be fair, it does just look like iridescent metal. Okay, the cobblestone normal map probably isn't the right thing for that, but I don't have a normal map. I, I don't have the exact normal map that I would want, basically. If I just jump back over to Chrome a second. Having a normal map of basically that kind of surface would be really good, but I just don't have that on me. Okay, so that's how we create an iridescent effect. If there's any other material effects that you want to know, um, just let me know in the comments. Um, oh yeah, one final thing, the um, soap bubble effect. Okay, so if I, like we can't really do this with a material instance, so I'm going to copy, uh, we'll duplicate the iridescent material itself. We'll call this uh, M irid bubble. Then editing that. Right, what we need to do, if we click on the material itself, we need to change this so it's a um, translucent material, which automatically, yeah, half the pins are now greyed out. So we don't need these three metallic spe uh, specular roughness, because we're not using them anyway. We don't need the normal map wired in, so we can hold, hold Alt and click to break that link. And then the question here is, what do we do with opacity? So what we're going to do here is another linear interpolate using a Fresnel function as the um, alpha. So L for linear interpolate again. Um, A over here can stay as 0. B can stay as 1. That's going to be our opacity. And what we're going to wire into the alpha, if we just click and drag away from that, is Fresnel. And I'm not sure which one of these it is. I'm just going to go with utility Fresnel. And we'll see if it's worked right away. Because what we should have is, like Fresnel, if you're not aware, the value that comes out of here depends on the angle you're looking at a surface from. So here, I can see in the preview, where we're looking directly at this thing in the middle, it is fully opaque, and then towards the edges, uh, sorry, it's fully transparent in the middle, and then towards the edges it turns opaque, like a, you know, like looking through a bubble. You may not want input A to be all the way down on zero. You might want point one, point two, something like that. Um, let's test that out. There, so you've got that kind of sub bubble style effect going on, and you can play with the parameters of the Fresnel function if you want to try and get that to be more, um, more to your liking. Let's just drop that on the base as well. There we go. So it looks like a weird kind of soap bubble in the shape of this thing. Okay, so that's a really basic iridescent material effect. It's not perfect, but it works. And like I said, there may be other ways to do this. Um, hope that's been useful, and thank you for watching. Oh, one final thing that I forgot to do. I said I'd show you what the effect of having um, 
of playing around with these masks are and why I've gone for RG at the top here and GB here. If we go for just R at the top and just G in the bottom here, so R going into the horizontal spectrum and G going into the vertical spectrum, you get, I mean, it looks pretty much the same. You would think, okay, what's the point? In, like, if you look here at this preview, that looks fine, right? The issue I found was it's um, mainly to turn the effect up here so that you can see it properly. So we get this instance, turn the effect all the way up to one, and then save that. See what I mean here? So like, it, you seem to, when looking at it from some sides, you seem to get big vertical stripes of color like this, like you've got a big purple stripe here, then red, then orange, yellow, and so on. And then from other angles, it'll look a little bit like say from above here it's much more of a patchwork of color which is what we want uh, that's really unfortunately due to the way that we're i mean if you think about it that where's the material the texture we're looking up into this is only really a one dimensional texture if that makes sense to you but the camera the camera's vector is a three component vector and what we're doing here is completely ignoring the height of the camera if that makes sense we're just looking at the red and green channels ignoring the blue altogether so the the angle of the camera in Z isn't having any effect on anything. At least I think that's what's happening. So if we change these masks, so we've got RG there and GB here, and apply that, I found that that looks better. You might disagree. I mean, you can play with that as much as you want. There's also a case to be made for saying, instead of wiring the normal map channels straight into these ads, maybe subtract 0.5 from them first, so that the number that comes into here is in the range uh, minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 rather than 0 to 1. I tried that. I don't think it made much of a difference, to be honest with you. Here, see, so now I've put the masks back the way they were. We don't have these like big stripes of colour running down this. It does vary going around the sphere in both directions. Um, from the back, okay, maybe a bit there is not so good. Like, as I say, there, there may be a better way of doing those masks so you get a better iridescent effect, but for this, um, I think that's fine. Anyway, um, thanks again for watching then. If you want to know how to do anything else, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.